Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be ranking almost every single palette that I tried in 2022. Almost because I'm going to do a two-part video for these because I want to spend a lot more time explaining what I love about my top 15 and swatching them and showing you why they are the best of the best that I tried this year and I don't want to spend as much time with the rest of these palettes, the ones that I'm going to be ranking in today's video, so definitely watch out for my top 15 palettes video tomorrow, but today we are going to rank a whole lot of them. Also, I wanted to mention that every palette in this ranking is a palette that I have played with, that I have swatched, and that I have put on my eyes in order to rank them where I did. I have received palettes in PR throughout the year that I didn't quite get the chance to play with, I didn't quite get the chance to make a video about, and so those palettes are not going to be included in this video. There is like a Gleminatrix palette, a Colourpop palette, and a few Sigma palettes that unfortunately I can't put in today's video. Anyways, it looks like I ended up playing with 65 palettes total throughout 2022. Of course, you can find content on each and every one of these palettes on my channel. And let's just go ahead and start ranking them from worst to best. Also, none of these palettes are actually terrible. I'm just ranking them on my level of excitement for them and whether or not I see myself reaching for them more in the future. So if one of your palettes is towards the bottom, please don't get mad. I probably do still like it. It's just that I have other favorites. <laughs> Anyways, on the 65th spot this year, I have this one from Viseart. This is their pastel palette that came out probably around the middle of the year. It's a little quad with not a super interesting color story, so it doesn't make me too excited. There is a couple of neutral matte shades, and then the shades that are supposed to be exciting about this one are this bronze, which is pretty common, and then the blue, which I didn't find performed that well. So since the blue was the main point of interest in this palette and I didn't like the blue, then it's just not a palette that I really see myself reaching for at all. And so that makes it the worst palette I tried in 2022. Following it up in the 64th spot, we have one of my favorite brands, Huda Beauty, and this atrocity that she came out with <laughs> during the middle of the year. This is the color block palette by Huda Beauty, and I just did not really like this one at all. I didn't like the color combinations. I heard that the other color block palette that I think had maybe like teals or mint shades or something like that was a much better option, but this is the one I chose and I did not like the color combinations I came up with. I found that the formula of these shades were very inconsistent, they were patchy, and for a palette with nine colors there's a lot of repeated shades in here, so it was just not a hit for me. <laughs> At number 63, I have another little Viseart quad. This one is the lavender one, which I liked a little bit more than the other one because I love purple eyeshadow. I feel like uh, at least one of the lavender shades in here is redundant. These two kind of look very similar to one another because this shade blends out into a similar color to this one. And obviously, since it's an all lavender quad, there's only one very specific look you can get out of using this one. So even though it's not a bad quad and it does have a nice formula, I'm just not overly excited for this one, you know? At number 62, the other quad, as you can see, I wasn't overly impressed with this collection. This is the Petite Four in the shade Pistachio. This one was my favorite out of the three quads. I like that we have a matte green, but also that we have a mid-tone brown shade to make things a little bit more interesting. I feel like out of this little quad, we could get two looks, which is really nice, a bit more variety in there. And to be completely honest with you, I don't really have anything against this one other than the fact that it just doesn't make me very excited. So this fills my 60 second spot. <laughs> 461, I have a palette that I actually got a beautiful look out of during the springtime. And that is this one from Nomad Cosmetics. This is their Tokyo palette. And it has a beautiful looking pastel color story. It has matte shades, it's got some satin, some really stunning shimmers. What it lacks is honestly pigmentation in a lot of these. I could get quite a few different looks out of this one, but they were all just 
kind of on the lackluster side. I have to build up the shades a lot in order to make it work. I'm going to see if I can insert a picture of the look that I'm talking about. That look I really loved and so that is why this palette is not like last even though I do feel like the formula could be a lot better because I am able to get a look like that one. I'm a bit more excited about this one but overall it's just not a palette that I recommend because a lot of these shimmer shades um, get hard panned the mattes kind of disappear on the eyes. Not a good situation, but I was able to get a couple of looks that I really liked with this one. So even though it's closed to last, it's not the worst, you know? <laughs> At number 60, I have a palette from a brand I used to love, the Urban Decay palette with Robin Eisenberg. This one came out during the fall time and it actually has a pretty beautiful color story. It's just that the formula didn't work for me. The colors don't blend well into one another or we have some mattes that don't show up at all, get patchy, blend away with ease. If we're talking about the shimmers, um, you really have to wet your brush with setting sprays to get those shimmers to actually look beautiful on the eye. I was able to get a beautiful look out of this palette after like three failed attempts. So it's also not the worst because it does have a few shades in there that I really love, particularly back here, but I just wish the formula was better. The formula, a bit of a disaster on this one, which is sad to say the least. At 59, I have the Land of Fire and Ice from Nomad Cosmetics. This is just a color story that I don't personally reach for that often, but I have been able to create looks that I really like with this palette. I like combining the cool tones with the warm tones in this one. And the formula in this palette is actually pretty good. The shades blend nicely. The shimmers show up beautifully. It's just not my favorite color story, so that's why it's a little bit further back, but nothing bad to say about this one, honestly. <laughs> 58 I have another one from Urban Decay. This is the Urban Decay half-baked palette. The formula of this one was actually not terrible It's just on the boring and basic side. So it's not a palette that I ever think of reaching for Therefore, it's not that exciting to me. Therefore, it gets put to the back of the list But honestly, it's a really nice everyday palette. You can get beautiful and simple work appropriate looks with this one It's a nice palette. I'm just not overly excited for it. That's all. Okay I think we're down to number 57. Number 57 is also from Nomad Cosmetics It's the Hudson Valley palette and this palette I am so conflicted about. There are aspects of this palette that I actually really love But then it also didn't work for me the way I wanted it to work so it had to go to the back of the list. Look at this stunning stunning fall color story. I was drooling over this when I saw it okay but then I realized that you can't really combine these warm shades with these cool tone shades. They just don't mix well together. Um, they become muddy. Somebody was um, schooling me on color theory in the comment section and said when you mix warms with cool tones things become muddy but honestly not always. I have plenty of palettes in my collection that have amazing formulas where you can blend the color into another but still see distinctive colors left behind and with this one it all becomes one big muddy mess. Now the reason it's not further back is because if this palette was like this right here, if I couldn't even have the option of using these colors here at all, I think this palette is beautiful. <laughs> I actually was able to create a really stunning fall look with this palette that I loved and you guys saw it on my channel when I wore it and you asked me for um, a tutorial of it. I had to recreate that tutorial in a whole different video because I had tried to film it for the video where you asked me but it had become such a mess that I had to wipe it off twice and it was just not a good situation. Anyways, long story short, I was able to create a beautiful fall look with this one and if I stick to like one of the two sections of the palette on their own, it actually works nicely. It's just combining them that messes things up for me. And also some of the lighter shades blend away a bit too easily, become a little patchy from time to time. I had a few difficulties with this one, but I still love the looks that I created and I still love the color story. <laughs> Number 56, I believe, is this one right here, the Jadette palette from 
the brand called Crush. I went to Spain in the spring and I wanted to try a Spanish makeup brand. This is what I ended up grabbing and this is what the inside of this palette looks like. It's a really nice light and romantic color story. A little bit on the basic side, but I mean, I knew that. I chose it myself. I wanted something that was everyday, that was springy. The formula isn't anything over the top, but I did end up liking the formula of it. And the palette ended up being something that I just don't reach for that much which pushes it back a bit in my collection but overall a nice experience I would say at number 55 a palette that I actually had really high expectations for but ended up disappointing me I even created a five looks one palette with this one that's how much I envisioned I would like it but I honestly don't and I never reach for it um, I'm talking about the Hintash palette this is called monochromance and honestly I like it better for like blush bronzing contour than I do for eyeshadow. I find the formula to be kind of meh. Um, I find the colors to be kind of meh. There's nothing overly exciting about this one. Um, I did, like I said, created a five looks one palette with it. It was okay. I don't know. I just really was hyped for this palette and I expected so much more and I've ended up never reaching for it. So that's why this one is in my 55th spot. 54 is the first palette I tried in 2022. The first palette review was with the Huda Beauty Tiger palette. This is what it looks like right here. I actually don't know why I put it this far back. I guess from here on we start getting into the fun, exciting stuff because I do like this palette. It has a cute color story, some nice yellow, some nice shimmers, some nice mattes. Absolutely nothing against it, but there's also nothing that stands out a lot from this one so that's why this is in my 54th spot 53 i have this one right here the better than chocolate palette from too faced i consider putting this one further back but honestly even though it's not the palette i envisioned it being even though it disappointed me terribly because the couple of pops of color are absolutely terrible <laughs> it is a nice neutral palette otherwise so if you just stick to using the basic neutral shades the chocolate looking shades from this palette you can actually get beautiful looks out of here just don't go for this blue don't go for this purple i know that they are the prettiest colors in here but trust me don't go there because you are going to be so let down <laughs> anyways besides the colors that actually attracted me to grab this palette this is a nice chocolatey palette, a good palette that you can reach for on a daily basis. And so that is why this one is my number 53. At 52, I have a Kaleidos palette that I actually gave away, so I don't have with me right now. But it's the darker, more moodier version of this one here. Let me pop a picture right there. It's a palette that had beautiful grade mattes, a very richly pigmented black, and the most stunning intense silver ever. I gave it away because even though I do like the formula and I did like the look that I created with it, it's a palette that I see myself barely reaching for or reaching for only in very specific occasions. And I have other palettes in my collection that have a very similar color story plus the person I gave it to I just thought would get more use out of it than I did it's actually a nice palette with a nice formula just don't see myself reaching for that color story all that often and so that is why that one is number 52 I think yeah 52 at number 51 I have another Nomad Cosmetics palette this one right here is the Whistler Snow Lodge I think this might have been the first Nomad palette I ever tried and I do really like the formula of this again just not a color story that i reach for all that often but i do like the colors that are on here and i think that the formula in this palette is actually spot on all of the mattes are beautiful all of the shimmers are beautiful nothing to complain about at all um just not a palette that i reach for all that often but i do like it and recommend it if you're a more colorful person than i am and this is a color story that attracts you i highly recommend it it's a beautiful palette i just never reach for it at number 50 I have another Kaleidos palette and I actually just remembered that I had two more Kaleidos palettes that I should have added to this roundup so I'm going to put them in place right now and the numbers are going to be a little screwed up which I apologize for <laughs> um, but just give me a minute. Alright so instead of 50 this is going to be 52 thankfully the two palettes I was missing 
are a bit more exciting than this one for me. Anyways, this is the Kaleidos palette I showed you a few minutes ago with the brown mattes and this beautiful champagne color right here. A stunning color story. I love the Kaleidos formula. I feel like they kill it with how pigmented and blendable their mattes are. And their shimmers are really highly pigmented as you can see right here, which I absolutely love. That is totally my perfect type of a makeup palette combo. Beautiful, creamy mattes, blendable mattes, pigmented mattes, and really stunning shimmer. So this one is number 52, just because it's an all matte brown palette. Nothing overly exciting about this color story, but I do really love the formula. Okay, so at number 51, also from Kaleidos, this one right here, this is the Glowing Iris palette. And this is what this one looks like. I like the pigmentation, I like the colors, beautiful blendable mattes, amazing glistening shimmers, but just not a color story that I'm reaching for all that often. Honestly, Kaleidos didn't launch any big palettes this year, and I'm a little bit disappointed by it. I'm just not a huge fan of quads, specifically when they don't even have like super small packaging, like they're not travel palettes per se. They just are smaller color stories and I usually like to have more diversity in my palettes. So palettes that have more shades excite me more in general. So I hope that Kaleidos comes back next year with some bigger palettes because I just was not a huge fan of the quads. At number 50, once again, now that i fixed my ranking, <laughs> I have this one right here from Natasha Denona. This is the mini crush palette that came out this year, and I actually like it. I think this came out for Valentine's Day, was it? It's a romantic looking palette, beautiful Natasha Denona formulas that I really love, but it was honestly forgettable for me. It's not a super exciting color story, not a super exciting mini palette from Natasha, so that's why this one is number 50. At number 49, I have this Dominique Cosmetics The Moment palette right here. Honestly, I like this palette, but I haven't reached for it all that often ever since I tried it. There are a couple of shades in this palette that attract me a lot, and that is these two shimmer shades right here. This beautiful teal shade in the middle is definitely the reason that I bought this palette to begin with, and I think it makes it all worth it. Otherwise, it's like a pretty boring kind of neutral-ish palette, but that shade makes it special. This dual chrome shade right here I also really liked, and this kind of looks greenish in the pan, but when you put it on the crease of your eye, it looks more like a neutral brown. Anyways, it's a nice palette with a decent formula. I just haven't reached for as much as I thought I would, and it only has a couple things that for me make it special. At number 48, I believe, I have this little tiny thing right here, the Secret Santa palette from Too Faced. I know I have been really hating on the Too Faced formula that is in this Better Than Chocolate palette. And I stand by that. But for some reason, don't ask me why, I think that the Too Faced formula that is in this Secret Santa palette is amazing. I used it a couple of times. I think it's highly pigmented. The shades are rich. They are buttery. They are blendable. The color story is a bit on the boring side. I mainly bought it because I really like the packaging of it. But it's honestly a good formula from Too Faced. So I really hope that they continue to produce formulas with this quality for their bigger palettes because that's what they should be doing to begin with. This palette was just a cute for the holidays type of thing. I honestly really liked it and I recommended it when I got it and I stand by that. I like it, it's a cute little thing. <laughs> At number 47, the last Kaleidos quad, which is the one that I like the most. This one is called Flowing Haze, and this is what it looks like right here. I like this one a bit more because the color story is a bit more diverse. I love the cool tone, mauvey, purpley shades that this one has. It has a really pretty shimmer duo chrome as well. I feel like even though it's just a quad, you can come up with a few different looks with this one, and like I was mentioning before, I love the Kaleidos formula, so this one excites me a bit more than the previous ones I mentioned. At number 46, another Natasha Denona Mini, this time the Mini Bronze Palette. Here is what this one looks like. I really like this one, it has a lovely color story. I do wish that the two colors on each end would be a bit more different from one another because they are pretty similar. I would have taken the warmer one away and put a different color in here, maybe 
an inner corner shimmer shade or just something else, something different. Other than that though, it's a beautiful palette. Natasha Denona never disappoints with her formulas. It has a pretty color story, very travel friendly, great for daily use. And I loved it, I recommended it. It's just that the rest of these excite me a little bit more. <laughs> At number 45, I have this one here from Colourpop that I just recently tried. This is from the Colourpop at Target collection and it is called the Colourpop Muse Moment Palette. I like the color story of this one and the Colourpop formula usually performs well. I'm usually able to work with it. I love that we have some neutral shades, some warm peachy shades and also some minty shades which have been so popular lately. Also this color right here in the center, I don't know that it looks like it on camera but it is a beautiful dual chrome. You have perfect shades to transition with, you have perfect shades to intensify that transition color with, and perfect pops of color in this one. What is not to love? It doesn't overly excite me, but it is a really pretty palette, and so this is number 45. 44 is another Natasha Denona Mini, the smallest one of them all, the baby one right here. This is the baby gold palette that came out for Christmas. I still have it in the box because I'm planning on giving it away. But I did use this palette, meaning I pulled out the three shades that come in here from my regular gold palette and I created looks with it. And I do really like this color story. My favorite thing about it is the matte shades. I could just have those two matte shades right there and they are a perfect everyday duo. Plus that Natasha Denona gold in the center is also really pretty. For some reason it excites me more than the other minis that I just talked about from Natasha. Denona, I'm questioning myself as we speak. It's honestly the mattes for me, just because those two matte shades are so perfect, this one does excite me more than the ones I talked about previously. <laughs> At number 43, another little palette, this time from Anastasia. This is the Anastasia Glam To Go Eyeshadow Palette. It is a perfect mauve palette for every day. If you work in an office environment or anywhere where you just want to do a light, romantic, mauve makeup on a daily basis, this would be a palette that you could go to because it has the perfect shades. It has a really nice amount of matte, a few shimmers for pops of color. You can get a handful of different looks out of this one and it has a really lovely formula with a beautiful packaging. There's nothing I don't like about this one. It's not the most exciting color story, but I do really like how this one performs. At number 42, I have a palette that I feel very similarly about, except I put it a bit more forward, a bit more to the front, just because I love the shimmers in this one so much. And I'm talking about this uh, Pat McGrath Celestial Nirvana Nude Allure Palette. The color story, Nothing extraordinary, <laughs> but I do really love the formulas of this Pat McGrath quint that came out for the holiday season. I believe that these are sold out, which honestly surprised me when I was browsing the website the other day. Anyways, this palette has this fantastic, very pigmented mid-tone brown that blends out like an absolute dream. And then it has really beautiful complementary shades that you can use with it. You can do looks using this always as your transition shade, this always as the color on your crease and just switching between the top three shimmers right here for the center of the eyelid and that would look beautiful and you wouldn't have to think about that much and it could be a very good everyday palette if you can use shimmers to your place of work or wherever you go on a daily basis. Anyways, I love this one. At number 41, another one that I really loved from a brand that I discovered this year. This palette didn't come out this year, but I did try it this year and it is this palette from M Cosmetics. It surprised me that this palette was made in Italy, but at the same time it doesn't because honestly M Cosmetics just has amazing quality in all of the products that they produce. The mattes in this palette are so freaking buttery and beautiful. The shimmers are pigmented and buttery as well. It has a nice color story, also a perfect palette for every day and um, very travel friendly, actually. Um, it's a palette that you can easily sneak anywhere. The color story of this one is nothing overly exciting, but I do love my peaches, especially for the spring and summertime. And overall, I really love this palette. It's just that I have other palettes in front of this one that excite me a little bit more. As you can see, it's been a while since I said anything bad about any palette that I'm talking about because I think from here on, I pretty much love everything. <laughs> I believe this next one is number 40 and it is from NARS. This is the NARS Summer Untamed, Unrated, 
Summer Unrated Palette. Here's what the inside of this one looks like. As you can see, it has 16 beautiful shades, nice and peachy, nice and neutral. Perfect palette for every day as well, except it has more shades in it. So, you know, a little bit more variety within this color story. I love NARS's eyeshadow formula. I think it performs really well. My thing with NARS is that they never come out with palettes that I find overly exciting, but there's also never anything wrong with them. I just wish that they would explore different color stories, if you will. But I do love this one, I recommended it when it came out. It's a really lovely palette, and I know a lot of you actually bought it and love it. So shout out to you if you love this NARS um, Summer Unrated palette. I love it too, honestly. <laughs> At number 39, I have an Urban Decay palette, and that was this one. It actually, I don't think, got the best reviews from everyone, or at least that's what one of you said in the comments, but I really liked it. I really love the combination of peach and green shades. I have a few different palettes that have a similar combination of colors. I think most of them from Natasha Denona, and I love them all. This palette has a pretty decent formula. The shades are nice and creamy. They're not too powdery. They blend up nicely. They build up nicely. Granted, majority of the shades in this palette are pretty light, but they don't disappear on your eye like some of the ones I mentioned before. In the previous Urban Decay palettes I mentioned, overall, I had fun playing with this palette. It was great for the spring and summertime. I think I even put it in my favorite videos because I was really digging it at that moment in time. It's been a while since it was spring and summer, so I haven't been reaching for this color story that much lately. I'm in the cool zone as of lately, as you can see, but it was a lovely palette, nothing against it cute little packaging, something different. It was refreshing. That's what it was. Um, and I loved it. 38 is a palette from Nomad Cosmetics. I believe this one was inspired by Costa Rica. And this is what it looks like right here. It is quite the colorful palette. I did really like it though because you can create some really fun looks with this one. Nomad Cosmetics has something. They always make me step out of my comfort zone with their color stories because I get these palettes and then I try and make them work and I create looks that I'm like, wow, I like didn't know I was capable of creating something that beautiful and colorful. But then at the same time, because I am not a colorful person on a daily basis, I have a hard time going back and reaching for palettes like this one. However, I do love them whenever I do reach for them. And I always love your guys' feedback when I try a palette like this one and I create something colorful and beautiful and you guys love it. I just have a more neutral, boring mindset on a daily basis and I have to remember to dig into palettes like this one because when I do, I love the results, to be honest. <laughs> At number 37, I have this palette right here from Cleona Cosmetics. This is their Dragon Fruit palette that came out during the springtime. And I am obsessed with these shimmers. Love the shimmers. The quality of the shades in this palette are amazing. The only reason this one is not like more forward, more exciting to me is because it doesn't have any matte, which I get it. You guys have explained to me in the comments that it doesn't matter that it doesn't have any mattes, that this is a palette that you're meant to pair with other mattes in your collection and that's definitely the way that I would use it. I would come in here just for the pops of color because I have used it on its own and I can get eyeshadow looks with it but it's not as exciting. Anyways, this palette is beautiful, it's colorful but it's not too intimidating especially if you combine it with matte shades from other palettes that are a bit more neutral and just come in here for those pops of color. I loved it when I tried it, nothing bad to say about this one, but if I were to do it myself, I would put a couple mattes in there just because, I don't know, I feel like a palette with no mattes is missing something. <laughs> I'm very traditional in that way. <laughs> At number 36, this one right here from Fantasy Cosmetica. This is a brand that I tried this year and when I tell you they have the most amazing, amazing little color stories, I absolutely loved this palette. It has amazing formulas as well. This is another one of those that I really loved when I first tried it, but it's a bit on the colorful side, so I don't think about reaching for it all that often. My favorite thing about this one, though, are definitely the shimmers, specifically those two right there. These are like fairy shimmers, and you barely have to touch them to get the most intense pigment. Take a look at that. 
oh my god i love love shades like those so i have to remember to reach for this one even if i am using something different and i just want to grab for those shades specifically because those shades make this palette totally worth it and i also love this one and this matte burgundy down here to die for anyways this fantasy cosmetica palette was great it's called the sorcerer palette and if you haven't tried fantasy cosmetica yet it is a small indie brand and they are coming out with bangers so i recommend it at number 35 i have another nomad cosmetics palette i tried a lot of nomad cosmetics in 2022 so forgive me <laughs> more than they launched i tried because i tried palettes from previous years as well anyways this one was actually one of my favorites from them that i tried the color story is just a bit more up my alley it's called america's parks and i just love a more toned down color story if you know what i mean this one has nice neutral shades that you can pair with the pops of color that come in here it also has this stunning burgundy shade and i love the shimmer yellow the shimmer green this shade right here is also lovely, the duo chrome. Nothing bad to say about this one. It has an incredible formula. Every single one of those shades performs amazingly as well. So I loved it, I highly recommend it. At number 34, I have the Il Maquillage and Kathleen Lights collaboration palette. I feel like I overall gave this one a semi-bad review because I was disappointed by it, but it's not a bad palette. It's just a neutral, more boring palette. And I feel like Kathleen Light did such an amazing job at selling it to me that when I saw it, I was a bit let down by it. Like she kept comparing the shimmers in this palette to Pat McGrath shimmers and they're not Pat McGrath quality shimmers. I just kind of let myself be fooled by that. <laughs> they are pretty shimmers. You can totally build them up to create nice looks on the eyelid but they're not Pat McGrath quality shimmers in my personal humble opinion. Besides that, I feel like there's a lot of repetitiveness in the center of the palette right here. I feel like, you know, a couple of those matte browns could have been changed or switched for something else, but overall it's a nice palette. It has a nice formula. The mattes blend nicely. The shimmers show up beautifully on the eyelids. Nothing too bad about it. I just was a little disappointed by what I expected versus what I got. But as you can see, it made it quite forward in my collection. It's kind of right in the middle. <laughs> At number 33, I have this palette right here from Adept Cosmetics. This is the Amunet palette. Adept Cosmetics is another brand I discovered this year and I have fallen so hard in love for their shimmer formulas and their dual chromes. This palette here, however, just wasn't my favorite because I didn't like the color selection of it. I can create looks with it and like I said, I'm obsessed with every single shimmer that you see in this one. And I hate that I don't love it because the thing that I always say when I try a Dip Cosmetics palette is I wish it had more mattes in them so that you can create even more looks with the mattes and the shimmers combined. And this is an Adept Cosmetics palette that actually has four, five different matte formulas, which is a lot more than they usually put in their palettes. And I don't like it as much as I like the others anyways. I just feel like the color story is a bit off to me personally. I wasn't good at finding color combinations that I loved with this one. And for that reason and that reason alone, it's not further up in my collection, even though I'm obsessed with the shimmers and the dual chromes that this one has. At number 32, I have one that I tried quite recently. This is from KVD Beauty. Very underrated. I didn't even know that this had come out. I'm glad I was browsing the Ulta website because I actually really liked it. It has this really beautiful autumnal color story with the mustardy shades and the olive greens. It has really fun pops of color in there as well. I love that they included a matte black that you can deepen up any of your matte shades with and I absolutely love all of the pops of color that they included in this one in particular this dark purple and this teal shade right here overall I think this is a very fun palette kind of on the underrated side and I'm obsessed with the packaging of it Moving on to number 31, we have another Huda Beauty palette. This one came out, I think, sometime at the beginning of the year. It's called the Love Fest palette, and I actually really love it. I am weak for burgundies, and this one has a half burgundy color story. I love the purple shade. I love this 
burgundy shimmer I love the burgundy dark matte and it combines beautifully with the warmer shades that this palette has in it if I remember correctly this shade right here I wasn't a huge fan of because it's kind of meh nothing too special a really lovely palette I totally enjoyed playing with this one so so much and now that I noticed Huda didn't launch a whole lot of obsessions palettes throughout the year she launched three four actually because I didn't get one of them which isn't that much I feel like she usually does like at least six anyways I loved the love fest palettes moving on to number 30 and number 30 is an Anastasia palette this one right here that came out during the fall time it is called the rose metals palette from Anastasia I think the formulas of the colors in here are beautiful it is a stunning grungy palette it has a nice combination of cool tones and warm tones I overall did really like this one but this is not a color story that I see myself reaching for all that often so even though the colors are amazing and the formulas are great I feel like I put it a bit further back than majority of people will just because it's just not a color story that I pay attention to all that much <laughs> I don't know I kind of feel bad about this one being number 30 instead of like in the top 10 or 15 but I know me and I know that I'm just not going to reach for it all that often so it's number 30 <laughs> also this palette has a special place in my heart because this is the first PR I ever received from Anastasia at number 29 I have another Nomad Cosmetics palette another quite colorful one that I wish I reached for more often maybe once the spring and summertime come back around I will it's definitely not a winter palette and that is this one right here I believe this is called the Pacific Islands Paradise Islands palette and it is beautiful I did not find anything wrong with this one at all the formulas of pretty much all of the shades were amazing I did have a bit of trouble blending this blue that I remembered but every single other shade in this palette was great I think I did a three looks one palette with this one and I loved every single look that I created again Nomad makes me step out of my comfort zone like no other brand does and I wish that I reached for these palettes more often because when I do play with them I love the color combinations and the looks that I create but then I just go back to my good old boring nude ways <laughs> anyways love this palette I did highly recommend it because it was amazing at number 28 a palette that I tried rather recently this one right here from Odin's Eye this was the Christmas Eve palette from their sold out Christmas collection this palette has an absolutely stunning cool toned color story I love the Odin's Eye formula it is amazing and I pretty much love every single shimmer shade that this palette has plus it has some really nice cool tone mattes that you can combine them with this color down here I lost for this multi-chrome shade down here as well I honestly love this palette so freaking much I don't want to talk about it much because you guys can't get it anymore but it is so good <laughs> at number 27 another Nomad Cosmetics palette I believe this might be the last one anyways this was the Fets the Province palette it was inspired by France and I love this one the most because even though as per usual with Nomad Cosmetics it is a colorful color story it is a more toned down colorful color story so I feel more comfortable with colors like these right here this is a Noah cosmetics palette that I do reach for all of these more pastel toned down matte shades performed beautifully you can deepen them up super easily with these darker tones of matte down here and then pop these center shades right on the eyelid for a beautiful glistening type of effect I think I did three looks with this one in a video if I remember correctly and I loved every single look I created with it it was beautiful and I love this Nomad Cosmetics palette so so much highly recommended <laughs> at number 26 I have a Colourpop palette that is dear to my heart and that is this beautiful palette right here from the Harry Potter and Colourpop collection this palette has an excellent combination of colorful shades with really stunning neutrals as well plus it is Harry Potter themed it has the Marauders map right in between the shades right there and an absolutely stunning packaging I am a huge Harry Potter fan okay and so that definitely adds a lot of extra excitement in my book 
to this palette which is why it's a bit closer to the front of the list right here but all in all a beautiful wearable palette you can also add a few pops of color here and there to spice things up and i think colourpop killed it with this one could it have been even better yes it could have been even better but my heart is content with what they came up with overall at number 25 i have a pat mcgrath palette and now i'm debating if this was the first palette i reviewed in 2022 rather than the tiger palette from huda beauty it was definitely one of the two anyways this one came out last year in December. It took forever for me to get my order and so I finally ended up reviewing it right at the beginning of December and this is the Pat McGrath Bridgerton collaboration palette, the first one that they did. Here's what the inside of this one looks like. Obviously my favorite shade in this palette is very clearly messed up right there. I think this beautiful icy blue shade right here combines so beautifully with the rest of the colors in this palette. Plus, I find that this palette has an absolutely stunning formula, as per usual with Pat McGrath, honestly. The packaging, I feel like, could have been a little bit better, but I'm not too mad about it. And I feel like she um, came out with new formulas, starting with this one, these kind of like satiny shades right here she had never done before. You can actually use them as blush as well and they perform really beautifully but anyways a neutral color story with burgundies and roses and a stunning pop of color that is very shimmery what is not to love um so this is my number 25 palette this year at number 24 another palette from fantasy cosmetica and that is this one right here the druid palette i believe this was the first one i ever tried it has a really stunning fall color story like i told you before with the other fantasy cosmetica palette they kill it with their formulas and they kill it with their shimmers and duo chrome shades so i love this palette because it is something that is easy to reach for it creates some really stunning looks and the shimmers are very like attention grabbing and they make your eyes look spectacular so what is not to love and at number 23 i have another palette also from the same brand this one right here this is the last one i tried the bard palette also an absolutely stunning color story it's fall as well but a bit brighter a bit more fun and i loved it in particular this shade right here i find that it goes so well with these two matte shades I loved the blue, I also love this burgundy, this orangey transition shade, this color for the inner corner, I'm obsessed with this palette actually. Um, I think as the brand grows, they definitely need to work on making their packaging a bit more exciting per se, but for an indie brand that just started, they are creating pure magic and i love them by the way i have discount codes with a few of these indie brands that i'll leave down below in the description box if you're interested always try patty 10 because usually that's the code <laughs> but with some of the brands i don't have that code i have something different at number 24 i have another odin's eye palette also from the christmas collection this is the merry christmas palette right here I am obsessed with this palette. The duochromes and the green shades in this one are also completely spectacular. It also has this warm color story down here. This is the most pigmented chunky gold shade I've ever, ever tried. Um, this one and that one right there are some spectacular looking shades. There's nothing not to love about this palette right here. It's quite on the colorful side, which makes it not be like my top favorite palette of the year because with this formula and with how much I like some of these shades it pretty much could be but because it's all color and there's no like neutral transition-y type more boring shade I can pair it with it doesn't go even higher for me but an absolutely stunning palette I have had so much fun playing with this one I still need to pull it out some more during the season to create some looks because it is beautiful on Christmas Day actually I will probably be wearing this one it is such a special palette at number 21 I have the best quad that I tried in 2022 and I can say that because 
There are no more quads from here forward. There are a couple more small palettes, but no more quads. So my favorite quad of 2022 <laughs> was this one right here from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams Quad. And I mean, I'm very predictable when it comes to the color stories that I like because this is a color story that I adore and I reach for and I never get tired or bored of playing with. It is just beautiful and I love this shimmer shade right here it has a really stunning pigmentation this lighter color right here also stunning it's reminded me a lot of the fire rose palette which is you know sadly discontinued never coming back whatever from charlotte silbury she should bring it back anyways i don't want to go there it reminded me a lot of the fire rose color story and so for that reason i'm always excited to reach for this one and use it and charlotte tilbury has one of these formulas that is so freaking easy to love easy to play with easy to build up easy to create looks with i highly recommend this little quad definitely my favorite quad that came out in 2022 so if you are a smaller eyeshadow type of person you cannot go wrong with this one at number 20 this one right here from pat mcgrath which is part of the holiday collection this is the Celestial Nirvana in the color Bronze Bliss. This is the palette that I was wearing in yesterday's video, I believe it was, maybe the day before. But anyways, this palette is amazing. It has this like light matte black shade, I will say, right here that blends out like an absolute dream. So you can create the most stunning dark matte black smoky eye that diffuses so easily with it. Plus it has this absolutely incredible silver shade right here that you barely have to touch. And you get the most intense, smoothest pigmentation ever. It has a couple of bronzy shades that accompany it so beautifully. This one right here that you can use on the inner corner. I love this one. I honestly think that this holiday palette from Pat McGrath is very special. And so I don't remember what number this is, but it is where it is because I love it. <laughs> All right, that was number 20. You guys have no idea how many times I have to count to whatever number I'm on throughout these videos. At number 19, the palette that I am mainly wearing today, you guys like, you guys like, I'm wearing this one right here from Lisa Eldridge. This is the Lisa Eldridge Vega palette and it is a beautiful, stunning, cool-toned dream. First of all, Lisa Eldridge killed it with the formula of this palette. This has the most creamy mattes I have ever tried. The colors build and blend so easily. This is another one of those formulas that is so beginner friendly, so easy to use. A round of applause for Lisa and the amazing formula that she achieved with this launch. This is what a luxury palette should be. <coughs> Chanel, which I forgot to put in this video. Oh my god, I keep doing this. You guys remember that this was number 65, this was the first one in the video, right? And then it became 67 because I added two more palettes to the ranking. Okay, so this is 67, and here are 68 and 69 from the Chanel Tweed collection. In case anyone wants to see them again, here are 68 and 69 from the Chanel Tweed collection. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, this right here is what a luxury palette formula should be like. It's creamy, it's luxurious, you can build it up if you want to in a very natural looking classy way, or you can simply just go for the lighter shades in here if you don't want to get this darker effect that I'm wearing. This is not the palette I have in the center of the eye, by the way. This shimmer came from somewhere else. But anyways, this is a beautiful, classy palette. The formulas are luxurious. The packaging is luxurious. It is a 10 out of 10 for me. I absolutely love it. And this is what all luxury eyeshadow brands should try to achieve right here. This is my new gold standard for luxury small palettes. <laughs> At number 18, I have another Adept Cosmetics palette. This is the Nanidran palette, which I'm obsessed with, to be honest with you. I'm loving, loving this palette. The shimmer shades in this one are 
all the rage. I want to reach for them all the time. I love it. The only con I have against this one is I do wish it had more matte shades in it. But the shimmers in this one and the dual chrome shades are a 10 out of 10. If this palette had four matte shades that I was in love with, this would probably be my number one palette of the year. However, because it has two matte shades that I'm like, eh, about <laughs> with stunning shimmer shades, then that's the reason why it's at number 17 rather than one. <laughs> At number 16, I have this stunning palette from Odin's Eye, the Gila palette in collaboration with Angelica Nyquist. This palette is absolutely beautiful and it deserves to be in this pot for all of the shades. But like if it only had these four right here, it would probably be in the same spot because these four shades down here are what absolutely make this palette for me. Actually, you can add this one and that one to the list as well. So those two shades and the four at the bottom are definitely 100% what make this palette so special for me. This palette has the most stunning dark, deep burgundy shade I have in my entire makeup collection and also the most stunning multi-chrome shade that I have in my entire makeup collection. It is such a glorious palette with such a glorious formula. I truly honestly wish I was even more into green shades than I am to love it even more because honestly what makes this palette amazing for me is the shades down here. It is beautiful, highly recommended. I don't know if they still have it in stock but I know that it's soon will sell out and it'll never come back. Um, and it is just such a beautiful, beautiful palette. Definitely highly recommended. Lastly, at number 16, I have a Natasha Denona palette. This one right over here, the Natasha Denona Pastel palette. This was my favorite palette during the spring season. I didn't want to put it down. It made me step out of my comfort zone in the most beautiful way because I created looks with this one that I was so in love with. Every time I played with this palette, I felt like a fairy because the looks were very fairy-like. I love every single one of these beautiful pastel matte shades and every single one of these beautiful pastel shimmers. This palette is stunning. 10 out of 10. I highly recommend it. If you are into color or if you want to step into color a little bit or if you just like to look like a fairy, definitely go for this one. This will give you the fairy look for sure. I have a 5 looks 1 palette that I created with this one if you want inspiration. I also have a video where I reviewed it and I love it. I absolutely love this one so so much but I love the 15 palettes that I have ahead of this one even more. So this is where this video ends and I'm so sorry to leave you hanging. These are majority of the palettes that I tried in 2022 ranked from worst to best. So we went from 69 all the way to 16 and for tomorrow's video I will have the top 15 palettes ranked for you. I definitely want to spend more time swatching my top 15, showing you looks with my top 15, etc. So I didn't want to cram everything in one big video. And I really hope that you guys can forgive me for that. I know I'm a horrible person, but I think it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it to be able to swatch some of the shades off the top 15 palettes and show you some looks with it, etc. Um, so that is it for this ranking video and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. This was a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. And I still have to do the top 15, but I'll leave that for tomorrow. I'm a little tired. Anyways, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. Please let me know what was the worst palette you tried in 2022. You already know the answer to that question from me but definitely let me know what was the worst palette that you tried this year down in the comment section very interested in finding out i love you guys so so much thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i hope to see you back in tomorrow's video bye bye